Hello, and welcome to the first edition of This is Why We Can't Make Nice Things with Katie and Rich Lovely. For this video, it's going to be mostly Katie's hands and Rich's behind the scenes taking care of the audio and visual. So if the video or the voiceover suck, you can blame him, and that's why we can't make nice things. So for today, I am doing a cheaty version of a historical band box. I ordered my historical wallpaper on eBay. This is a 1860s era print by Wallpaper Aficionado. Um, and I got a sample, which was 18 by 18 for $5, which is actually really good. And I am using a paper mache box that I purchased from Michael's. I am using a template based on the size of my box to cut off my first piece. I used an old folder, which is just heavy paper, to trace it and cut it. And then I scored it onto the wallpaper before cutting with an X-Acto knife. If you're watching this, you're likely much more crafty than I am. So you probably already have most of the things that you need to make these. We're not going to watch this in real time. I think Rich said there was like an hour and a half of footage, mostly of me screwing things up and going back and redoing them. So we're not going to be watching this in real time, just to let you know. I also spend a lot of time cutting tabs so that the paper will fit smoothly over the box, which we are not going to watch in real time either. I did not make myself bleed for this video, which considering that that's a brand new, completely super sharp X-Acto knife in my hand is actually quite a feat. The scoring of the circle then allowed me to pre-bend the tabs so that I made sure to get my design centered the way that I wanted it once I fit it on the box. The glue that I'm using, I have no freaking clue what it is, but I got it at Hobby Lobby and it said it wasn't gonna make my paper peel. It does allow a little bit of workability, but it does also dry pretty quickly. Um, it was in the dollhouse section, probably for putting wallpaper on dollhouse walls. So I did a little bit of experimenting here. This is why most of the footage is me screwing things up because this is the first time I ever used this glue. It's very thick and doesn't spread very well. So it said you could delete it with warm water. The trick is you don't wanna use much warm water. I tried dissolving it in warm water, that didn't work. By the end of this video, I had finally gotten the hang of it. Um, and what I would do is dip my brush in hot water and then dip it in the glue. And that would help thin it out enough that it spread nicely on the box without diluting it too much that it would take so long to dry and slide around and things would come detached before it had a chance to set up. This is where I used too much water and not enough glue and things got really messy and horrible. So don't be like me. One thing I also found when I used too much water was not that it would make the wallpaper bubble, but it would actually cause bubbling on the surface of the paper mache box. Once I finally got the hang of using this glue, I really liked it. Um, so if that is something that you wanna try, I found it very easy to work with once I figured it out. This is where I got bubbling in the paper mache. Um, so what I did was I cut a slit in the bubble and pressed it flat. That worked um, perfectly well. So if you can learn from my mistakes and you want to try this product as well, I will put a photo and list what it is in my blog post because it did not cause bubbling in my paper once it was used properly. The plastic tools that I'm using to uh, crease the paper, score it, scoop the glue, all of that, those are sculpting tools. Those I found in the clay aisle at my local craft store. Using the plastic tools really helped to be able to smooth things out because I would find that no matter how careful I was, I would get glue on my hands and then that would actually pry up some pieces of paper when I would try to push them down with my sticky fingers, then they would get stuck to the paper and pull away from the box. Yeah, I'm actually kind of jealous of you guys who are watching the finished video. I'm watching this in real time to do the voiceover and you get to watch it in not real time, which means that you don't have to watch my painful mistakes happening over and over again. In some cases, you'll be able to position motifs the way you want them on the box. With this, um, the width of the paper was barely enough to cover the bottom of the box in circumference. You'll see later on that I have to cut a little patch to cover the top of the box because obviously the circumference of the top is bigger than the circumference of the bottom so that the top can fit over the bottom when the box is closed. So in this case, because I had such a small piece of paper, I was fairly limited in what I could do. You know, I chose the nicest motif for the top and then I had to work around that. Using metal measuring tools is a must for when you are cutting with a straight edge blade like this. Um, 
also with a rotary cutter. But anything where you're dragging a blade along the side of your measuring tool, you really do need to have metal. I have cut chunks out of my wooden yardsticks before, and that's just a sad story. That's probably why I'm the swearing seamstress, because I go against my better judgment and do stupid things. Once again, this is why we can't make nice things. But pre-scoring the paper helps it fold a lot more crisply. And I'm just using the sculpting tool and running it along the line where I want it to fold. And that just creates a little dent that helps the paper to fold right along that line. Another thing in this video that you should do as I say, not as I do, is when you start to wrap around the circumference of your box, start at one end and work all of the excess around the box in one way. I started in the middle and ended up having to unstick and restick a couple of times because I thought, oh, maybe I'll push the two ends toward each other. I would not recommend that. Maybe you can make it work. I did not make it work very well, so your mileage may vary. Here I am starting in the middle of the strip. Start at the end of the strip. Don't be like me. Learn from my mistakes. The brushes I used for spreading the glue were very inexpensive nylon bristle brushes that I got in the painting section also at Hobby Lobby. I used a 40% off coupon and I think they came to maybe $4 for a set of three. Um, it is nice to have different sizes, especially if you're covering larger boxes. You're going to want to be able to spread lots of glue at the same time in addition to doing small amounts for when you glue down some of those little tabs around edges. Step one, stick everything down real good. Step two, Curse a lot. Step three, unstick and restick because you did it wrong. It looks like I'm trying to frost a cake. This was a whole lot less tasty than frosting a cake. I'm not very good at that either, but at least you get to lick the spatula at the end. This, you do not want to lick the spatula at the end. Ta-da, it still fits. That's good. Oh, this is probably my favorite part. So a lot of band boxes were lined with newspaper clippings. Um, I don't personally have antique newspapers lying around, and if I did, I'm pretty sure it would be some sort of sacrilege to cut them up and glue them to the inside of a cheap paper mache box from Michael's. So what I did was I found a place online where I could print off Godey's Ladies Magazine, a publication from the 1860s. I think I picked 1862 or something like that. Um, it was just on Google, uh, Google Books or something like that. I will try and find the link and include it in the blog post. But in order to make them look old, because I just printed them on regular printer paper, I decided that I was going to tea dye them. So the clip that you just saw was me making tea with two PG Tips tea bags uh, stolen from my husband's stash because he's British. And whenever anything happens or whenever anything doesn't happen or whenever he's awake or thinking about being awake or thinking about being asleep or basically any time it's time for tea and PG tips is the brand of choice. This is just plain old black tea. Uh, so for the tea dyeing of the paper, uh, this is a half sheet pan that I got from a restaurant supply store and I just made sure it was clean, didn't have any oil on it. Um, it looks a little smudgy, but that's because I was a bad girl and put it through the dishwasher. You're not supposed to do that. Apparently it ruins the finish and or warps them, but yeah, whatever. I'm not that fancy of a baker, um, but it has nice tall edges, so it wasn't going to slop. I still managed to spill because that's just how awesome I am, but it wasn't, you know, like a jelly roll pan or something with small edges where I was afraid that stuff was just going to splash out.
I didn't want it to look super old because actually when you're making reproductions for use in a living history setting, you don't want it to look antique and old. You want it to look new because it was new in the 1860s or the 1760s or whatever it is that you're portraying. So, you know, I don't want it to look like I stole Aunt Mabel's antique Bible and cut pages out of it. Not that I would ever do that to an antique book or a Bible, but you don't want it to look like it's 50 years old when you're making it, you know, I'm making it to portray a person's objects in 1863 and the papers from 1863 and the, the wallpapers from 1863, the lining should match that. It shouldn't be 50 year old paper because, you know, I wouldn't use an antique now. Why would past me, you know, history me use antique paper to line my band boxes then? Um, that was probably horribly incoherent, but basically I didn't want it to look super old. So I was fine with diluting my tea so it wasn't so strong. Someone posted a question not too long ago about band boxes on the Historical So Monthly Facebook group. And somebody mentioned that they were working on one using um, Virginia Gazette gift wrap paper that Colonial Williamsburg produces that they found on eBay. So that might be a good option for uh, if you want a roll of paper instead of having to do this every time or to find your own newsprint sources or anything like that. So by now you're probably kind of getting the hang of this. You cover the top, fold the tabs down, cover the side, fold the tabs in. Um, and then you kind of do that in reverse for the inside. You will cover all the edges on the inside, all the tabs, all the edges of the, the top cover. Kind of like lining a garment, a lot more glue involved. A lot more of a learning curve for me at this point. I have mad respect for people who do paper craft. It is not exactly one of my skills, as you can see by watching this. Um, but I, I am quite happy with how this turned out. It will be great for taking things to events. It's just handy to have little boxes that you can put things in. Oh, and the young sophisticate uh, Annalise, who I met at Genesee last year, she had a really great project on her blog. She had a uh, band, a small band box, little tiny one covered in period paper that she turned into a really beautiful little sewing kit. So she made like little fabric covered partitions to put in the box for all of her little sewing accessories. So everything fit really nicely in there. And it was just a really nice custom made sewing kit and it was beautiful. So that would be a really great idea to do with one of the smaller boxes. Okay. So now we have the dried paper. You can see it's a little bit wrinkly, um, but easily dealt with. This is the same template that I use to cover the top of the box. Hopefully you can tell that that uh, repro newsprint is no longer the blinding optic white that it used to be and looks much more appropriate for a newspaper rather than something printed off on copier paper. And I think we're probably just going to speed through this uh, because there's not a whole lot to say about the rest of this. Once you've seen me cover the bottom of the box, it's pretty much the same as for the top of the box. Cut a circle, glue it down, cut some strips, glue them around. I probably should think of something that rhymes with down and around to finish that, but I'm sorry, poetry is not my strong suit. Does anyone else think it'd be really cool if I did a blog giveaway with one of these boxes as the prize? Because I kind of thought that would be cool, but I'm not sure if anyone else thinks these are cool enough to be a cool blog giveaway prize. I'm also not sure how to run a blog giveaway or if enough people actually read my blog to make it worthwhile. Although I guess if I don't have very many people and everyone who does read it enters a giveaway, higher chance for you guys to win. So win-win maybe. But yeah, let me know if you think it would be worthwhile to make this into a giveaway item because I now have at least 20 yards of wallpaper sitting around in my house. And as much as I like boxes, I do not need as many boxes as that would cover. And I would love to share these. And I don't necessarily feel like I need to start an Etsy or anything. So let me know if you think it'd be worth it. Also, let me know if you have experience with blog giveaways and if you have any tips. And I decided that I wanted the pretty script from the title to be the lid of my box. Um, cause that doesn't get covered with stuff when you put stuff in your box so that you would still be able to see it. And the footage is going to cut off before I completely finish this. So basically I just smooth, smoothed things out, um, cut some more strips from another one of the pieces of paper and glued them to cover up all the quote unquote raw edges. And that's about it.
So comment in the blog post or the Katie Lovely Swearing Seamstress Facebook page if any of this is not clear or if you have ideas for more videos or if you think I'm terrible and should never make another video again in my life. Just feel free to let me know. I'm actually pretty open to criticism on this. I'm not going to get all butt hurt if it's terrible and I'm well aware that there's room for improvement. So yeah, if you have any ideas or questions, comments, rotten tomatoes, let me know.